What are my top three tips for developing your own SaaS, having done a few myself and actually made money with them? Um, number one, know your domain very well. Know the target business very well. Uh, imagining that you know what a particular industry needs in terms of a SaaS, imagining from the outside is a recipe for disaster. So come from it come to it from a point of knowledge and experience. So for example, if you happen to work in restaurants and you see an, you know, independent cafes, or for example, and you happen to see a need for a particular type of software for independent cafes, because you've been working in cafes for a year or two, that might be a good idea. But if you've never worked in a cafe and you have an idea for a, a SaaS that a coffee shop might like, that's probably not a good idea. What you could do in that situation is to go talk to a whole bunch of coffee shop owners and operators and see what they think, see if they'd be willing to invest in the project. This video is sponsored by Opt-in Monster. This service provides a bunch of tools that allow you to maximize the number of people on your email list, which leads to many more sales. So let's take a quick look. As you can see, Opt-in Monster is used by over a million websites, including many heavy hitters like American American Express, Pinterest, McCarthy, Harvard University, TripAdvisor, and more. So how does Optin Monster work? Number one, you can create visually stunning landing pages or offering pages that you see here. It's all template driven. Because they're working with so many websites, you can be sure that they've learned how to create great offer pages like this one. The second step is you're able to personalize and target visitors to your site through their uh, tools. Again, presenting the offer page and the offers at the right moment. You're able to test and adjust your offers in real time. So they provide the tools to do that. Optin Monster requires minimal setup and they have all these capabilities here. Beautiful lead capture forms, A-B testing, page level targeting, analytics and insight, multiple form types, exit intent technology, advanced traffic redirection, on-site retargeting, and personalization. So a lot of tools that allow you to convert very easily. I invite you to take a look at Optin Monster. Take a look below for a link and a discount code that will give you 25% off of the price. It's worth looking into. I can tell you from personal experience, Website optimization is hugely important in terms of conversion. Number one tip for creating SaaS is know your domain very well. My second tip for jumping into the SaaS business is iterate extremely quickly. When you're coming up with your version one, your alphas and your betas of your version one of your application, you just want to get it out the door as quickly as possible. You're not going to try to write, write uh, the best code ever written. You're going to get it out super quick. doesn't mean write crappy code, but it means you're going to be cutting corners here and there to get it out quick because you want to get your application, you want to get the SaaS into the hands of your end users as quickly as possible because you're likely going to find out that there's a whole bunch of things that you need to add to it and remove from it and modify, a lot of things you never expected. So if you have to go back in there and dig out all this uh, rewrite rather and replace all this rock solid code that you, you've tripled your development time to make it rock solid, you're going to be kicking yourself, be wasting a lot of time and money in that respect. So iterate quickly, get it out quickly. Once you have a solid uh, use case in terms of your app, your SaaS, and once you understand how the SaaS actually needs to work because you've actually had a lot of users use it, then you can solidify it. With Studio Web, had over a million users use it and uh, students. And uh, now we, uh, after you know several years, I you know I finally felt comfortable in terms of my knowledge of the uh, domain and how the SaaS had to work. So with Studio Web four and and the five version, that's much more solid of a code base, although uh, the uh, prototype that we developed off of, even though it had a lot to be desired in terms of code, still worked. My final tip as a SaaS developer, somebody who's going to be developing your own SaaS, make sure the UX and the UI are amazing. One of the things I've talked about before, UX and UI are what separate the successful from the not so successful in terms of software these days. Performance can be retrofitted, can be fixed. Uh, uh, of course, 
You have to have a good understanding of the use case, meaning domain knowledge, that is first and foremost. But UX, UI, hugely important. So don't skimp on making your app look good and don't skimp on the app being easy to use, which can be a lot of work. I'm going to read a comment that somebody wrote under my, my little Fang video that I put out a couple of days ago, more than a few days ago. And then I'm going to comment on that. So he goes, um, so I was talking about whether or not uh, you'd want to work for Fang. Fang are those big companies, Apple, Facebook, Google, Netflix. Anyhow, and this, this has to do with whether or not you want to work for one of these highly prestigious, uh, well-known companies. And this comment, this guy, Andreas, made a comment which I think is worth uh, talking about. He goes a step further. He talks about, okay, you work for a FANG. How important is having the FANG on the resume? Will that help you with future work? Really will it help you too much? Well, let's take a look what he says. I think nowadays the resume thing is overrated. Sure, having a FANG on a resume is nice, but in this current job market with this demand, you just need to have some developer job for a few years, then you can do whatever you want. True. You just need to have, oh, I just read that line. Let me go with the next line. It's really that tight right now, at least in my experience, unless you're actually interested in what the thing is doing, AI with Google, for example, a normal dev job will probably teach you just as much and look just as good on the resume. Indeed, indeed, as I've been saying for uh, a couple of years now, people have been following my channel. I said, there's no shortage of jobs for development. This is not going to change anytime soon. So if you have a bit of experience, just a couple of years, even doing freelance work where you can show a whole bunch of projects, that's the, that's the low hanging fruit for people who don't have higher education, perhaps. You can take all the jobs, there's all kinds of jobs. There's all kinds of jobs open to you. So I'm not gonna revisit the Fang video. You can watch it, uh, just go to, my, go to the, uh, the videos previously, you'll see it listed there. That being said, uh, the whole discussion about Fangs, it applies to working for any large, high profile company. That said, you know, it does impress a little bit. You say, ooh, I uh, worked for Google. Ooh, I worked for uh, Merck. Uh, ooh, I worked, you know, it does a bit. But there's such a demand for developers, you know. I don't really, see, I think this guy has got, uh, he's hit the nail on the head, in my opinion. Uh, there you go. All right, that's it, bye.